<laughs> the big news in the wrestling world occurred the month before this clash a few weeks earlier when Nails, Kevin Wackles, was fired from the WWF. Was that an applause there, slightly breaking out? Yeah, a little, little golf clap. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> but there's a modicum of respect, I think, for most of the guys in the business to to Kevin Kelly and Nails. Yeah. Uh, so a few weeks earlier at the Clash, uh, he ended up throttling Vince McMahon over a pay dispute relating to SummerSlam 1992 that lasted, for, not the throttling, but the argument, 45 minutes to an hour. After, fight, after the fight was eventually broken up by WWF agents Sergeant Slaughter, Earl Hebner, Arnold Skoland, and Gorilla Monsoon, Nails called police, claiming that McMahon had tried to molest him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And, brilliant, uh, br- brilliant cover. Yeah, brilliant cover. I mean, he's so pretty as well, wasn't he, uh, Kevin, as well? <laughs> and uh, this was apparently the second... I never heard this until today. I'd researched it. This was apparently the second time Vince had made an unwanted advance on Mr. Nails, uh, the last mm. time happening a month earlier at Madison Square Garden. He then goes to do really nothing in wrestling. He's more or less, I won't say retired, but uh, then he gives an impassioned I hate Vince McMahon's guts speech at McMahon's federal steroid trial that was very much counterproductive to, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure, his intended goals. <laughs> now, uh, Papa Shango replaces Nails in house show main events versus The Undertaker. Nails, uh, how much interaction, if any, did you have with uh, Kevin Wackles over the years? Yeah, very little. Uh, he, as I recall, was a guy that sort of kept to himself, not not in a jackass way or anything. He just like came in, did his thing, left. Uh, uh, I don't, in my recollection, recall him like palling around with anybody. Uh, you know, you sort of, you know, when you're on the road, you sort of click up with you know your 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 buddies and you know, pals and things. Uh, and I don't recall ever seeing Kevin. I, it's not to say he didn't, uh, but I don't ever recall seeing that. But, you know, he always seemed to be a pretty straight up dude to me. Um, you know, obviously a tough guy, uh, you know, just came in and just did his thing. And, and that was it. You know, it's uh, uh, pretty always straightforward, at least around me, in my recollection. Uh, telegram, telephone, tele wrestler. How long did it take <laughs> for you to hear the news? And actually, what was your reaction? Because at the time you'd come off, you know, very favorable sort of run with the WWF and I imagine that you had sort of fairly positive opinions of Vince at the time. So what were your reactions to that news? Yeah. Surprised uh, because, you know, it, I mean, like this is the kind of you know, having straddled both the real world and the wrestling world, right. You know, having been a teacher and, you know, started some businesses and things, it, it's the kind of thing you can't, you know, in any job you've ever had, you ever thought like you're going to go there and somebody's going to beat the boss up. Right. I mean, it just does not the kind of thing that typically happens, but in wrestling, we're at this time we're sort of in this gray period between old school, new school, sport, uh, professional wrestling, sports entertainment. So the business is in this transition period, uh, you know. But but in either of those schoolings, it still was never copacetic to say, "Okay, I'm going to beat the boss up." Uh, that's what told me when I first heard, like you know, you're, you're taken back, like huh, what? And then like you start to think it through and go, okay, like you, cause there's always these scuttlebutt rumors, you know, like I, I'll state it like Bruno used to always state, state it, San Martino. I can't say I saw with my own eyes, but I would always hear these stories and now that doesn't make them true or not. Uh, but when you base it on, you know, how long being in the business and, then, and working there multiple times, the things that we had seen on planes and, you know, different buildings and things like that. And then you start putting pieces together. And again, that, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're, you're correct in the, in the puzzle that you assemble, but you, you know, the, the old saying goes where there's smoke, there's fire. And, and there was certainly the same picture kept popping up, uh, whether it was being told in the dressing rooms on planes and cars, traveling in hotel rooms, hotel bars, you know, you would hear this constantly over and over again. And then this happens with Kevin Kelly. Uh, uh, you know, you could tell that he was the type of guy that wasn't trifled to be trifled with. Like he, he didn't seem like he suffered fools well. And you know, being a big tough guy like that, like you know, if you know the the allegation being that he made advances on him, uh, I'm, I'm sure Kevin, you know, w- would have shot that down and said, like, to try it a second time. Like, okay, it wasn't successful the first time, so let's try it again. I. It, yeah, it, it just seems odd, but I do know that from that point forward, uh, Vince McMahon would never go into a room with a wrestler alone again. And, uh, 
you know, the way I'd always taken this story, and again, this is like, you know, it's not a thing that comes up quite often, but like when my always take on my, my take on the story since then had always been there was a money dispute. I, I'm hip. Uh, I get that. Uh, you know, experienced it myself. And uh, that there was this, you know, confrontation over the money and Kevin beat the hell out of him and made the allegation based like to protect themselves so that Vince couldn't go and say, Hey, this guy beat me up or whatever. Um, and, uh, that, that was, uh, as far as my recollection goes to where the story, I, I had never given the credence or looked at it from the point of view of, did it really happen? Uh, so I, I can't speak on that side of it. I just know that afterwards Vince was rare to go into, I, I shouldn't say never, like it's one of those generalizations, right? But he was very, very rare that he'd walk in. If you remember my story backstage, the last show today, uh, at the garden, you know, we, the doctor and I are in the room with him and there's a, you know, blackjack lawns, a Rene Goulet, uh, 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 uh Arnold Scoland, uh, you know, all the uh, chief chase trauma, they were all in there, Pat Patterson, there was a group of people in there. And, uh, that was always, you know, my takeaway from that Vince going forward, but, you know, you said something like, you know, Kevin's comments at the, at the steroid trial, and we had talked the last episode, um, you know, a little bit about the allegations of pending allegations right now. And so, you know, so-called impending indictment, uh, this is the, and I said it then, if you recall, like on the, on the federal steps after he won, <clears throat> Vince won, he came out and what did he say? I'm Vincent fucking McMahon, uh, you know, you know, you, you don't you don't doink the government in the eye like that because if I'm the FBI agent in charge of that case or the DOJ uh, uh, person, uh, I might retire in 20, 30 years. And when I retire, you're the incoming guy. I'm going to give you that file and say, "Hey, keep your eye on this jackass, mm -hmm. right?" And then when you retire, it's going to go on to the next one, the next one, the next one. You just don't poke the bear that that way. And uh, so that you know, it's possibly a little bit of what we're seeing in the current situation with uh, the looming indictment um uh, alleged looming indictment but uh you know with kevin like kevin had always taken on like sort of a cult status in the business for anybody that had experienced the wwf wwe that i experienced uh you know and i think he'll always hold that cult status because of that you know a little bit of envy in, in, in the fact that he was able to do it and get away with it <laughs>